don't you dare say anything. Don't you dare say anything to anyone or I will kill you. Those were the words repeated to me almost daily by my father. I was taught, trained, and raised to stay silent. In silence, darkness thrives. The power of child abuse, domestic violence, bullying, racism, and mental health illnesses is our silence. I'm a former world number four tennis player, a Grand Slam singles semi-finalist, a Grand Slam doubles finalist, now a commentator, analyst, speaker, and two-time best-selling author. But finding my voice through truth-telling, speaking up, and sharing my story is by far my biggest accomplishment. Why? Because it saved my life, and it's inspiring others. I would not be here today if I didn't tell my story. Now, I use my voice to inspire others, call out injustice in the hope of making a difference, creating change in the hope of removing shame and stigma around really important issues in sport and society, and to normalise the conversation around them. This is a story of going from victim to survivor to thriver. But let me start at the beginning. My name is Yelena Dokic. I was born in war-torn Yugoslavia, in the region that is now Croatia. We didn't have a lot, but up until the age of six, I have some happy memories from home with my parents. My father was inspired by Monica Sellis and Steffi Graf, two greats of the game, and their 1989 French Open semi-final clash. And a couple of days after that semi-final, at the age of six, he put a racket in my hand for the very first time. Even though I loved tennis straight away, the very first day that I started playing tennis, I was beaten. I was slapped, my hair and my ears were pulled, and I was called degrading names. From that day, things only got worse. In fact, they were never the same again. Abuse, whether emotional or physical, became normal and a part of my everyday life. By the time I was 11, I was beaten with a, with a leather belt to the point of bleeding. I was kicked. I was hit over the head with shoes. I was spat at. By the time I was 16, I was kicked and punched almost daily. My father became an alcoholic. The abuse got worse to the point where in one of my last and worst beatings, I was kicked in the shins with sharp dress shoes so relentlessly that I was bruised for weeks. To this day, my shins still have hardened bumps on them. But that was not the worst part that night. My father kicked me and punched me in the head so hard that it left me unconscious. Why one of my last beatings? Because that brutal night was the catalyst for me to escape. A short time later, in the middle of the night, and run for my life. Those were the physical scars, but the emotional ones were just as bad. Being called dumb, useless, cow, and even a whore from the age of 11. The worst part was, after making the semi-finals of Wimbledon at 17 years of age, I was not allowed to come back home. I had to hide and sleep on the grounds of Wimbledon because my father thought that I didn't deserve to sleep at home and that I wasn't good enough. The hardest part, though, was that my reputation with fans, media, and the tennis community was shattered because of my father's outbursts. I was judged through my father's actions. Every day was a battle, and playing tennis well and winning became a race for survival. On top of that, I was a refugee twice due to the war in former Yugoslavia. The first time, we had to move out of Croatia into neighbouring Serbia overnight. We lived in very tough conditions, a shed infested with rats, limited water, no heating in winter, 
and waiting in line at 4 a.m. at the Red Cross to get some basic necessities and food. I was eight years old. My brother was just three months old. We were lucky if we had bread to eat, but most days we went hungry. I saw my first dead body when I was just eight as well. The second time we were refugees, I was 11, and we moved from Serbia to Australia. We slept on the floor for weeks when we first landed in Australia. I was bullied at school and also in the tennis community, and I was told to go back where I came from. Despite the hardship and the abuse, I had a talent, love and passion for the game, and it brought me to junior world champion at 15, a Wimbledon semi-finalist at 17, top 10 in the world at 18, and number four in the world at 19 years of age. But it wasn't enough for my father. He was unraveling. I left home at 19, which came with financial, emotional, and mental health consequences. My father didn't leave me alone. He would show up at tournaments. He would constantly threaten me. I gave him everything that I had up until that point, which was millions, but it still wasn't enough for him. More than 15 years of abuse, pressure, trauma, and fear led me to almost take my own life in 2005 as a 22-year-old. I didn't know it at the time, but I was battling anxiety, depression, and PTSD. I retired early for an elite tennis player at the age of 29 because of injuries and mental health struggles. I was a very traumatized young woman with little to aspire to, the weight of the world on my shoulders, and with mental health illnesses, as well as an eating disorder, I didn't know I had. My identity disappeared as soon as I retired from tennis. I was left with no self-worth, self-belief, hope, or any will to live. I was barely existing. Then something incredible happened. Despite my fear, trauma, and adversity, I told the truth. I told my story, I found my voice, and it saved my life. When I wrote my first book, Unbreakable, and shared my story for the first time, I was actually free after almost 30 years. I didn't know that was going to happen. All I wanted was to tell my story to help someone else out there feel less alone in their struggles. I even say at the end of Unbreakable that if it helps one person, it's mission accomplished. That's all I wanted, just to help someone. But the day Unbreakable came out in November 2017 was the best day of my life. I started healing and living because I found my voice. I started healing through sharing my story, being vulnerable and shattering the myth of perfection. I was not defined by my past anymore. But most importantly, I was now helping others feel like they have a voice and feel like they are not alone in their struggles. This became a lot more than just about me. This was now about making a difference, calling out injustice, advocating for change, especially about child abuse, domestic violence and mental health. Now, six years later, I have just released my second book, Fearless. Fearless is about the journey beyond the trauma and adversity. It's about going from victim to survivor to thriver. It's about the strength, courage, and persistence it takes to begin and continue healing and even go further and thrive. It's about the power of sharing our stories, finding your voice, and the power of vulnerability. It's about hope and belief. A lot of things have helped me find the power to thrive, but the following in particular were key for me. The first was self-worth. Your self-worth is determined by you. It is not a group decision. Block the outside noise. I will never forget the words that someone once told me. They said, you better play tennis for as long as you can. What are you going to do after? Nothing. You're useless. My father used to tell me that as well. 
It wasn't easy to hear that, but I didn't let it get to me. In fact, I used it as motivation. Never let someone else's opinion get to you. Never doubt yourself, your worth, your capabilities. Don't depend on someone to tell you who you are. You are good enough. You are worthy and you're amazing. It's called self-worth for a reason. It comes from you. It comes from being yourself and being proud of who you are and being unapologetically yourself. That's where it comes from, not anybody else. The next thing that was really important as well was self-belief. Believe in yourself, your abilities, your potential, strength and courage. Believe that and then you can do anything, get through anything and survive anything. You are a lot stronger than you think you are. Believe you can and you've already taken a significant step towards that goal. As a tennis player, it doesn't matter who you're playing against, whether it's the number one in the world or the greats of the game. What matters is that you believe that you can win, even against the greatest. If you don't, you've already lost before you've even stepped foot on the court. It doesn't mean that you will always win, but you definitely have no chance if you don't believe it. Even if you get into a position to win, you won't actually be able to get over the line if you don't truly believe in yourself. It's the same in life. You have to believe in getting through the tough times and whatever life throws at you. If you don't, it makes it very difficult to survive. Always have faith in yourself. And then there is also shattering the myth of perfection. Perfection doesn't exist and it's actually not attainable. Real life is not perfect. There is no perfect body size, perfect person or a perfect scenario. In any case, who decides what is perfect? Society, media, social media? We're all imperfectly perfect and beautiful in our own way. And real life is about being real, raw, honest and your most authentic self. That is how you live your best life and not chasing perfection, which doesn't exist. Another extremely important thing that has helped me thrive is vulnerability. Vulnerability encourages honesty and authenticity. Being true to yourself leads to being a healthier, more honest person. Vulnerability has saved my life. The day I found strength and courage to be vulnerable is the day I started living. Vulnerability was the way I found my voice. But it was also the first step to asking and getting professional help that I needed to deal with my mental health struggles. And it saved my life. Vulnerability is strength, courage and truth. In tennis, sport and society, perfection and silence is golden. You have to be perfect, whatever that means, a certain size, ranking. You had to say all the right things, no emotions, no rawness. If you weren't perfect, which meant you were vulnerable, you spoke up about domestic violence, abuse, child abuse or anything similar, you were considered weak. You were shamed and you were stigmatized. There was pressure from society, media, sponsors, social media, fans, and even family. That's how sport and society was programmed for a very long time. If you spoke up about anything and if you were vulnerable, you also felt like you were giving a bit of that edge away to your opponents, like it was a weakness. You also felt like you were weak when it came to society and you felt like you weren't good enough. People suffering in silence due to their fear of being shamed and stigmatized. Our society is changing slowly, but we need to continue. Vulnerability and helping shatter the myth of perfection has allowed me to call out and fight against trolling and body shaming I have experienced as well. I've been doing that for the last couple of years and especially this year. Now, I really feel like society, social media and media are really listening. 
together, we are calling out trolling and body shaming when we hear it. And that is the power of vulnerability. Sharing my story has saved my life and it's inspiring others. But so many others have done the same. Grace Tame's story and her advocacy has changed a law. The Me Too movement uncovered incredible stories of silence and suffering. Simone Biles and the US gymnastics team have uncovered an incredible amount of abuse in sport. All of these stories and women and others have changed things forever by opening up and showing that vulnerability is courage, not a weakness. Most importantly, it is saving lives and changing history. We need to continue that. It takes guts to be vulnerable. It's not weak. It's when we start working together and sharing our stories that real change and healing starts to happen. Another very important thing that has also helped me find the power to thrive is finding meaning and purpose. We all must find meaning and purpose in this world. You have to find your passion, both privately and professionally, and then put your whole heart and soul into it. To find what that is, you have to be willing to get outside of your comfort zone and not be afraid of change. I was so scared after I retired from tennis at the age of 29. I was still young, but my identity was gone because tennis was all I ever knew. I didn't know what I was going to do. I didn't know what I was good at outside of tennis. But I went out there, I tried different things, got outside of my comfort zone and worked really hard. I also accepted every opportunity, big or small. I accepted it because I knew that it would make me better and that I would learn something, even if it didn't turn out to be my ultimate passion or meaning in life. That is how I got into TV, commentating, speaking and writing. If you told me 10 years ago that I would be a commentator, speaker and two-time best-selling author, I would have laughed. That's because I was so fearful of everything with no voice and no purpose in life. So much that I couldn't even leave my, my room, let alone look people in the eye and speak with confidence. I was a shell of a person. And now I do the opposite of that. I speak, present and commentate in front of thousands in person and millions listening. And that's what finding your voice, self-worth, self-belief, vulnerability and meaning in life does. The possibilities are endless. I also find a lot of meaning privately in my passions and hobbies. It's so important to keep yourself mentally and physically engaged through doing things that you love. For me, I found a lot of meaning in doing community work, discovering new hobbies like new sports, even pottery. We all have talents, passions and purpose and you can find it too. Another really important thing that has also helped me find the power to thrive is being able to find joy and happiness. I have found my happiness, joy and healing through gratitude, kindness and humour. I never wanted to be that bitter, resentful and hateful person, regardless of what happened to me. I wanted to be kind and grateful. Being kind and grateful at my core has brought me so much joy. Practicing gratitude every single day to stop, breathe, be in the moment and take it all in. The big and the small things. Find things to be grateful for. Another day, another opportunity. Celebrate the big and the small wins. It truly gives me joy to be kind and grateful. Today, I really enjoy the small things in life, which are actually the big things, like watching the sunrise and the sunset, enjoying the first coffee of the day, my feet in the sand and in the water, journaling and writing down my feelings every single day, even if it's just a few sentences, gives me healing and clarity. At the core of finding meaning and purpose for my life has been living in alignment with my core values. 
These have become a compass to help me truly thrive. I value joy, happiness, and the feeling of success of doing something that I love. I value having the right people around me. I value having a safe space to talk and make sense of life. I value the small pleasures, like taking a swim in the ocean. I value gratitude and living in the moment. Most of all, I value the simple things in life. Another way I thrive is to find humour and positivity even in the toughest times. I try and turn a negative situation into a positive. Every time you find some humour in a difficult situation, you win. A positive mindset makes things so much easier to handle. Through humour, you can ease some of the worst situations that life delivers. And if you can find some laughter, no matter how hard or painful your situation might be, you have a much bigger chance to survive it. And this is how I thrive. I refuse to be defined and defeated by my past. I refuse to let history dictate my future and my destiny. I extend kindness and a smile even when the world has shown me coldness. I speak up. I tell the truth, even if I'm afraid and even if my voice shakes. I believe in the light at the end of the tunnel and I always hold on to hope. I never give up on myself. My mission in life was not merely to survive, but to thrive and to do it with passion, strength, courage, compassion, kindness, and humor. I want my legacy to be an inspiration for others and to advocate for change. You are stronger than you think. You have more courage than you can believe. Please be kind. Never give up on your dreams and goals. And most importantly, on yourself. You have the strength to build yourself back up and the courage to start all over again if you have to. Stay the course, hold on, and you too can find the power to thrive. Victim, survivor, thriver. Thank you. <laughs>